dropping frames today. Okay, cool. Welcome back to the stream, everybody. My name's Twice. Uh, we are up to yet another new game today called Pentiment. Uh, set in 13, 14th century Bavaria. I know. A lot of games in 14th century Bavaria these days. Very overused setting, but stick with it. Trust me. It'll be interesting. Let's see. We're going to learn history. Admire the, the graphics. And be flawless in our mystery solving capabilities. If I had an editor, we'd flash back to the Sherlock Holmes game I played where I condemned an innocent, like, 14-year-old child for murder. Um, but I don't, so it's flawless, and we have no issues whatsoever. Let's get into it, right now. See what it's out. This game uses stylized fonts and writing effects that may be difficult for some readers. The easy read fonts option improves legibility by disabling some fonts and writing effects. I mean... I can read all that. And if I can't, it's funnier. Auto saves. Cool. How's everyone today? Yeah, I can read that. That's. This is a. Ro okay. That's a rock. It's an eraser rock. What if I just... What if I just... Do that. Okay. Like, congrats, you've locked yourself into the bad ending. Can't believe you've done that. Erase someone's hard work. Uh, this game is from Obsidian, so... Depending on the era that you exist in, uh, that could be Outer Worlds, or it could be, uh, like, KOTOR 2 and, um, Follow New Vegas. It's a smaller, uh, game from the studio, but I'm really excited for it, because they've obviously got quality writers still in in the studio, and pretty much everyone has praised this for, for what it is, so honestly, just excited to uh, try it out, and probably absolutely mangle the, the well-thought-out mysteries and narratives that they've given me in the next few days. Empire, casting Bavaria, April 1518. Okay. I guess we're in six, 16th century, though. An artist sleeps, an artist's mind. And the abbot said to me, Andres. Uh, that's very underlined. You need to finish this commission by the end of April. Keep your conversation with Brother Piero to a minimum. I don't want you distracting the sisters in the library. Um, what's wrong with Brother Piero? What have I done? I don't under... What's going on? <laughs> uh-huh. Is that, is that Brother Piero? Oh! Like, clicking on it... Shows us a picture of him? I assume? Hey, Brother Piero seems like a great dude. Why would I not want that? 
Brother Pierre is such a source of wisdom and encouragement for you, though. Indeed, but the rule of the Christian contemplative life demands that the brothers not engage in idle chatter. It's a long-ass finger. The rule of St. Benedict of Nursia is a book of instructions for monks living together under the guidance of an abbot. Written in the 6th century, the rule provides the principles for living a monastic life. Jesus Christ, what a pack of dullards. Be happy you're only stuck there for a few more months, Andreas. How did you reply to the abbot? Can I be a sassy artist? Thank Christ for that. <laughs> it's calling us to God, yours is to your labor, and the illumination that it brings. It's the abbot's house, so everyone has to play by his rules, or rather, the rule. Well, despite the abbot's ire, you must endure. Soon you'll finish both the abbot's work as well as your masterpiece. And then you will return to Nuremberg, where marriage and your new life as a master await you. Big city. Yes, marriage someone he has never met. Hardly ideal. Well, the alternative is becoming a philosopher. Oh, Jesus, I mean, she'll definitely get married. Is she pretty, at least? That was kind of fun. Um, well, the small portrait they sent was lovely, but we artists can be flatterers. The wheel of time stops for no man, Andreas. I fear you must leave us. True, Your Majesty. Will you visit us again soon? Hopefully, but it's out of my control, Your Majesty. As are many things. Trust in Providence. Robian, please see Andreas safely home. Of course, Your Majesty. Until next time, Andreas. Until next time, Your Majesty. What a delightful dream that was. Pay no mind to the other fools, Andreas. I never do. I just paid them attention. At least I would if they'd stop stepping on my feet. Watch where you're going. They're fools, Andreas. No point in trying to teach them anything. This guy right here. That's the life I'd like to leave. lead. I know old John wants you to endure the avid shit, but since I take you home, I get the last word. Don't let him run your ragged, boy. Hmm. He's just trying to keep word in the Abbey. I'm an outsider. Right, an outsider he brought in. If he wants your work, he has to deal with you as you are. Gah! Would you please stop? I give up. Take me home, Grobian. As you wish, Andreas. Legitimately a ship of fools. Hello, little one. Good morning, Ursula. Good and -er. <laughs> All right. Well, that's just about the best thing I've seen all day. Time to get up. Chapter one: The Baron, April fifteen eighteen. A few more pages back to the end. Prime, hour six, another day, another few pages for the abbot, and hopefully a few for myself. I need to get across town and head up to the abbey so I can start work at the scriptorium. What's this? That's me. Yeah. Andreas Mahler. Okay. Here's a map. Looks like I am at the Gertner Farm. There's the Johann Bauer Farm. The Franz Bauer. Charcoal Burner Shrine of St. Sasha. Sat, sat here. That salt mine to the Abbey around this mill. 
Interesting. Interesting. Tass tassling? Brother Piero Verona, artist of Kearsaw Abbey, known for his kindness and helpful nature, Brother Piero is also respected as a master painter, specializing in works of extraordinary color. Alright. What's this? Ah. That makes sense. That one. Just to, like, zoom out of the page, I guess. Work hours. Prime. Okay. The Picatrix, Key of Solomon, and Heptameron. Heptameron? Prior Fenrink keeps giving me all of these books to read. Okay. Should really clean this up. Go to bed. Probably don't do that. And we're... That's a good talk. Good talk. Clara. Good morning, Andreas. Did you sleep well? Quite well, actually. I'm so glad to hear. Anyway, I know you'll be off to the Abbey, so I packed you some food. Almonds, cheese, and some of the rye you like from the Albans. I don't want me to ask you to join him for dinner at the Abbey. You have stopped by? Yes, around dawn. Here you are, Andreas. That's too kind of you, Clara. Many thanks. That's around Andreas. Wouldn't be too much trouble, could I? I mean, could we? Would be too much trouble if you paid next month's rent today. And if we raised it by two groschen, type of thick silver coin minted throughout the Holy Roman Empire, typically worth 12 fennings, but may be minted at different values. Hmm. Hate to ask, but we're behind on our taxes to the Abbey. Two months behind. Peter's losing his hair over it, even more than usual. I mean. Looks great to me. I'm sure it's definitely a full head of hair over that. Hat. What's this one? Not sure how to respond to this. Rant? Rant, okay. Wasn't due until the beginning of May. and spare the money and ease their burden. You must take the consequences of inaction into account. <laughs> what is this shit? Don't they pay taxes every... I mean, they seem nice enough. We'll take the consequences of inaction into account. I don't know what that means, though. You're under no obligation to pay, but the Gertners will suffer for it. I don't want to be taken advantage of. Were these taxes unexpected? <laughs> oh, look. Why do I need to, uh... deal with that, you know? They're peasants. No need to nickel and dime them. Speaking of St. Luke, how's your masterpiece coming along? It's been two months now, hasn't it? Slowly, I'm afraid. Most of my days are spent doing work for the Abbey. It's only during the Divine Office that Prior Friend Rink allows me to work on my masterpiece. 
Prayer time observed by all Christian monastic orders. Monks and nuns pray together seven times a day and once at night. So be Hey, Byron. How are you doing today? Welcome to 16th century Bavaria? Something like that? Reasonable restriction, but slow going. City council doesn't require it to become a master. I'm making it mostly to show clients and for my own sake. And yes, when I do finish, I will go back to Nuremberg and I will marry and open a workshop of my own. Nuremberg to a university and now traveling the world as an artist. What a life you have ahead of you, Master Andreas. Yes, I suppose it does feel like I'm starting a new chapter in my life after. A little too much, but. <laughs> Must be rather frightening starting all over again. It is, but I know now that this is what I want to do. This will be remembered. Not many people get to decide that. Certainly not anyone in Tassel. Anyway, I don't know what you think about art, but I've seen you sketching such beautiful things in your little book. The masterpiece must be wonderful. Let's get in there. Hard work will get you all the way. That's what my father used to say, God rest his soul. Now I have to get back to my own work. Good day at the Abbey, Andres, and we'll see you after Vespers for supper. One of the major prayer hours. Not tonight, but thank you. Klaus Drucker invited me over for supper. Of course, please say hello to the Druckers for us, of course. Until later, Clara. I didn't actually talk to Eva. Hello, Andreas. Ah, no, that was it. <laughs> Peter. He, he do look ill. God bless you, uh, Andreas. Ah, oh yes, Andreas. This weather's been god-awful. This town's gone to shit since my days. Were things very different when you were young? As different as beer and piss. The old abbot didn't bother us much about our customs. He didn't mind if we left a little offering to Perkta to keep the skies clear. I assume that's like a pagan god. Yeah. Caius knew that Christ was in our hearts, even if the White Lady's name was on our lips. I thought St. Moritz protected Tassel. Wow, they have their own patron saint. Yes, and St. Sasha too, but... Who do you think protected it before they came along? God, they really have a lot of patron saints. Saints weren't the first to watch over Tassling. My father knew that. Old Rannig Kemper knew that. Who's that? Late husband. That doesn't help me at all. Thank you. Bastard Abbot may not like it, but some of us keep the traditions alive. Like the old widow, Attilia. Yes, yes. She always hangs the door frame with lavender to keep the spirits out. Who doesn't help with spirits? It does smell nice, I suppose. I just know it helps with ghosts and witches. And cough, cough. I should go. Goodbye, ill Peter. This is my run animation. Incredible. Big Yorg. <laughs> Or not, Andreas. How's it going? You working today? Just taking a rest for a bit. Dad's still in the field. He had a big rock with a plow, and it took me lord knows how long to pull it out. You off to the Abbey? Every day but Sunday. Right. Thank God for Sundays. It smells like a storm's coming, no? Oh, it smells like fresh alpine air to we. Me? We? You've been traveling too much. Where was it you spent your... Wandering car? Wandering years. Traveling far and wide to improve my skills. A background that will affect your character's choices going forward. Hmm. There are billions of saints. That's true. I, I mean, I'm just surprised there's so many. Atreus knows some Italian and French, can reference cultural touchstones from Basel and nearby Buren, Zurich, and Freiburg. 
some Dutch and French, and it can reference cultural touchstones from Antwerp, Bruges, and Ghent. Italian, Little Greek, cultural touchdowns, Florence, Venice, and Milan. All right, uh, I'm gonna do this mostly because I've got Dutch and French in me. All the great art cities of Flanders. Where's that? North and west, down by the sea. There's a problem. Seer is confused. Your sense of smell. Spend enough time in these mountains, you'll be able to smell a storm coming. How long will that take? Mm, 10, 15 years? I don't think I have that long, Big York. We spend all that time in Flanders doing anyway. Other than art, I mean. Ah. I'm a hedonist. <laughs> Lives to work, dedicates all his time to his art. Spends all his non-working free time finding and reading as many books as I possibly can. Businessman. Self-promotion, optimizing business, making investments, and balancing my books. I could be a rap scallion. That's definitely the most fun thing to say of those five words. Getting into trouble. I got involved in a scheme or two, a bit of mischief. More than a few brawls. Antwerp is overflowing with riches, rich fools, and traders from across Christendom and beyond. There's always someone to have a bit of fun with. Or a bit of a fight. Sounds like a strange way to pass the time, Andreas. Anyway, I have to get going. Org, let's go! Dad's already acting like I'm taking too long, even though I did all the work to get that rock out. Rapscallion's the furthest from you, IRL, though. It's true. But it's also definitely the most fun word of those five to say. <laughs> Which is <laughs> the only <laughs> category I based it off. <laughs> Town Commons. I guess that must be the way to go, right? I would have thought it was this way. Ah, of course, sheep are blocking. Can't move the sheep. Understood. Understood. That's my... That's my bad. Andreas, good timing. Give a moment to lend a hand. Uh, yeah, of course. I got too many irons in the fire. Or rather, shoes. Horseshoes. I was counted how many I put in, now I need a hand. I'll still overheat. I won't be able to work the metal. Here, take the shoe in the tongs. Okay. Put the hot part of the shoe on the anvil. And I'll hit it with a hammer. Uh, there you go. Bink. Bonk. Boom. Bink. Bonk. Boop. Good. Next one. Oh, God. What have I clicked on? I've accidentally clicked on something else on my street manager. What have I done? Back to the street manager. There we go. Thanks for the help, Andreas. I don't know what I was thinking and doing all those at once. I'm sure it'd be nice to have someone to help me out here every day. You considered a child? Child labor? Very... Very legal right now. Yeah, none of the boys in the village seem interested. Keep at them, fake, and get Bert Drucker. Oh, yeah, you could definitely get Bert Drucker. Ha! Klaus would have my head if I tried. And that's the guy who is having me for supper. Hopefully, not actually having me. Uh, don't want to take up any more of your time. I'll see you in auto up by the Abbey Guest House for dinner. Until then. And hey, it's a role-playing game. We're playing a role. Alright. I'm not much of a drinker, but I played the most degenerate alcoholic in... Disco Elysium. I didn't hear any complaints then. I also had a heart attack reaching... No! What was my favorite death? It was either when we sat in the really uncomfortable chair and had a heart attack... Or when I couldn't jump a gap between two buildings and I gate quit the police force out of shame. Those two stick with me. But you will play as a good guy in every game? Um... I mean, the problem there is, like... It's rare that you find a game that has... There's a lot of sheep here. 
like rewards you with good writing for an evil route, as opposed to just like, ah, I'm bad. Let me just commit genocide. <laughs> Like, even when it starts off good, like, Mass Effect 1 allowed you to kind of play both sides of... It was like Renegade versus Paragon. And they were both viable, in that most of the decisions weren't like, I am an evil person, or I am goody two-shoes. It was just like, this is more altruistic and this is more selfish, but if you're trying to save the world, it does make sense. And then by Mass Effect 3, it was like cure a terrible wrong on the world, commit genocide, and the, these is the two sides of the coin, eventually. It just... It's rare. You want to keep an eye on them. It's a lot like standing there and doing nothing. Pardon for Christ's sake, help your cousin. Ah, eh, morning, Andre. Excuse us. One of the fence rails fell and the sheep started, sheep started hopping it. Uh... Should I offer to help? The other is also upstairs. Also allows us to feel useful. Wait, that's presumptuous. I'm not close to their family. Hmm. If I'm not close to their family... I'll just try to stay out of your way. Look, there's something going on up at the Steinhauer's place? Who are these goobs? Sound on the horse looks rich. I don't know, Martin, but Lucky has given him an earful. I haven't seen Lucky that looked up since Peter and Clara's wedding. Oh my god, so many long fingers. When Johan pulled his pants down. Knocked two of my man's teeth out. You don't want to feel the strength behind a stonemason's anger. I think he's a noble. He looks really rich. God damn it. Behave yourself. Don't we have enough to deal with right now? Andreas, if you wouldn't mind moving your skinny little body up the road, we need to get these sheep under control. Of course. See you later. I hope you're and your cousin, alright? Eat shit, Andreas. Alright. I have indeed remembered this. Nothing I can do to talk to you there. Off we go. Unless I can go in here. Can I go in here? I cannot. A lot of sheep there. To the abbey I go. Eventually. Meh. Trucker house is locked. Yep. Uh, uh, ah, sure. Morning, Andre. How's it going? Warren Klaus. Another day at the Abbey, another few hours to work on my masterpiece. Good to hear. You still coming by for supper tonight? Marie and Bert would love to see you. Of course. Really need to see these new woodcuts I have for an Italian edition of Till Udenspiel. Udenspiegel? Titular character, titular character of a popular 15th century book. Till is a prankster, continually exposing the vices and hypocrisy of others. He is also quite skilled at tricking people into smelling, touching, or eating his excrement. <laughs> that took a turn. Didn't realize Father Thomas lets you print books in Italian. Come on, Andreas, he's not that strict. No, he's just trying to protect people from. Adventure stories of questionable moral repeat. He doesn't mind those so much, actually. No. As long as they don't get too... Carnal. Oh. Supper tonight after Vespers? Of course. Okay. Tell Marie and Bert you're coming. See you later. See you later. 
Can I go down? Doesn't look like it. There's Thomas. God bless, Master Mower. Hope your week is going well. Your father's going quite well. I'm just on my way up the hill to get to work. Good, good. Andreas, I don't recall seeing you at Sunday morning mass. I understand how important it is for your salvation to you receive Holy Communion, don't you? I just stayed up too late on Saturday. I don't want to get into an argument with him about this. Some of this time works hard, though. Mm. Just a sigh. Trance, do you think I like saying these silly things to people to get them to come to church? What a blessed day to receive such an illustrious visitor. Mr. Mahler, this is Lorenz, Baron of Rothvogel, a great lord from the countryside near Worms. Great lord and Worms don't really go together, but, uh... Hey, that's fine. Good to see you, Father Thomas. It is nice to be remembered fondly. I only wish all of your neighbors were as welcome. Well, yes. Which brings you back to our little town. My wife and I were returning from a trip to Venice. I know what Venice is, but I'm going to click on it anyways. Spent a few days in Innsbruck, and it was terribly dull. Site of witch trials in 1485. I mean, it has a certain charm common to these alpine cities, but the place was crawling with nobles for the emperor's diet. Assembly of three colleges of the imperial estates of the Holy Roman Empire. Prince electors, princes, and dukes and representatives of the imperial cities. They meet to deliberate on matters of importance to the emperor. Wow. The emperor? Was he there? Did you see him? Oh, briefly, but he was sitting for a portrait at the time. Quite lovely. Didn't want to bother him or the painter. Who was the artist? Wow. Sure you know him, an older man from Nuremberg with enough of a reputation to paint the emperor. Sorry, my lord, I'm not sure you mean. You've not heard of Albrecht Durer? Nope. Pity. Thought he was known across the Empire. Anyway, my wife wanted to stay a bit longer in Innsbruck, and I decided to ride ahead to make a visit to Kearsaw. Her father Matthias died shortly after my last visit, of course. He died recently. Hmm. Interesting. Great loss for the Abbey and us all. Indeed. By good fortune, I recently came across a copy of the Historia Tass Tassier? Count of the Early History of Tassing. Father Matthias is hoping for a second copy to corroborate the contents of the first. It contains some fascinating details about the history of this place. Afraid they might even cause a bit of a scandal. <laughs> ah, yes. Mm. But I must be on. There will be time enough to discuss Tassing's past later. I commissioned a manuscript from the Abbey through Father Gertnot, and I have come to check on his progress. If you've come to see your manuscript, you should speak with young Master Mahler here. Mm, I don't want to correct him. Honor to meet you, my lord. Andreas is a journeyman artist from Nuremberg. For the next few months, he's also helping in this Abbey's scriptorium. It's where you write scripts. Yeah, that makes sense. Nuremberg artist working in an Abbey scriptorium in 1518. Oh, we should talk, Andreas. I must know the story. Let's put a little pressure. Well, you know what? No, I'm always running late. I'm a rapscallion. Wonderful. It's so rare to find someone in the countryside who knows anything about art. Thank you for the introduction, Father Thomas. I'm supper at the Abbey tonight. I'm inviting you to the Abbot's table. Is, did the Abbot invite me? Oh, don't worry about it, Father. Just show up after Vespers. What's he going to do? Refuse us? I. Excellent. We will see you then. Miklos, I'm dismounted. Run ahead of us and take the horses to the Abbey's guest house. I'll take my time talking with Master Mahler. I'll meet you there. Anyways, that's how I 
flooded the entirety of Amsterdam with dead sardines. Forgive me for saying so, but you seem a little old to not yet be a master. Are you unmarried? Well, I'm not married. But in truth, I came to my vocation later than my father and brothers from university for a number of years at Erfurt. Ooh, forgot to click on it. Oh well. Wonderful. Same university as Martin Luther. Read his works. Tremendous. Yes, I know. Says things about the church that should have been said years ago. Might get him into trouble, but he's a brave, brilliant man. Wait, maybe you met him. Did you? You must tell me. Ah, no, he was a few years ahead of me. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll flatter this guy for now. Could be useful later. I agree wholeheartedly. Simply must meet him if I get the chance. I wonder if the good brothers of the Abbey have heard of him. Perhaps they've even read his list of 95 theses against the church. 15, 17, that was just a year ago. Father Matthias was not above having a lively debate. I hope Father Gertnot does not disappoint me in that regard. But enough about Luther for now. Tell me about your university studies. Okay. Did you attend university? You seem very well educated. Ha, no. Family is merely wealthy enough to provide me with all the books and tutors a child could dream of. I love all knowledge, from Aristotle to Cicero, to Ficino and Erasmus. Hmm. His work is extensively cited by current scholars, and even more work is attributed to him than he could have ever written. <laughs> Judge the Baron. Seems he's as well read as any university student. Truth, I'm simply happy to speak with another well educated man. Now then, did you earn your doctorate? Because we misjudged him, his text now is a lot more well written. That's neat. I. Uh, no, I didn't. Only a master's degree. I started working towards a doctorate, but didn't finish. Oh, that's a shame. What was your area of study? Uh. Medicine seems kind of interesting. All things medical, studying the latest and greatest texts out of it. Yes, the Italians continue to innovate in that area. Extraordinary, really. Fascinating work. Who knows what secrets we may learn about the human body in the decades to come. If I had any faith, I would have prayed you'd never show your face around here again. Which one? Curse you, Lawrence Rothvogel. Perked his dogs, tearing you to pieces would be too kind of fate. Hmm. What'd you do, Lawrence? What'd you do? What was that about? Who knows? Oh, all right. Sure. <laughs> of course. Chrome will probably be dead by the time I finish guessing. Well, what of your early time in university? Every student must study the trivium and the quadrivi qu quadrivia? Lower and upper divisions of a classical, liberal arts, university education, grammar, logic, rhetoric, arithmetic, geometry, music. Interesting. Do you have a favorite subject? Let's see. Strong command of Latin? Uh, adept at spatial analysis, complicated calculations, excelled at rhetoric, skilled teacher, persuader, and public speaker, soul endangering amount of theoretical and practical knowledge of alchemy, astrology, theurgy, necromancy, and you know, the constellation of heavenly bodies and their movement. Uh... Troublemaker would get the gift of gab, I would say. Art of persuasion, naturally. Rhetoric. I assume you studied the Greeks and Romans both? Yes, Aristotle and Cicero, of course, but also Christian thinkers like Augustine and Thomas Aquinas. True, we have less use for public discourse than senators did in the Roman Republic. Exactly. Doctors of the church weren't trying to persuade politicians, but to move the mind towards Christian truth. 
Still, the principles remain the same. Invent your arguments and arrange style and internalize them before delivering them to your audience. Spot? Well, I suppose an artist has little use for rhetoric, especially in a place such as this. Not true. Rhetoric is also an art, and like other forms of art, should be created for the audience and its purpose. It can be practiced as easily in the streets of a rural town as in the Korea of Rome. I know what Rome is, but again, we just gotta click on it so it gets added to our glossary. Yeah, there's things. Anything else you excelled at? Oh, I get two. I'm guessing I'm gonna put that there too. Quite interesting for an artist. Was Aristotle's Organon the foundation of your study? Yes, the Organon for logic and Euclid's elements for geometry, but the past few centuries have yielded wonderful new texts. On logic. I wasn't able to click that for whatever reason. Peter Abelard provided the foundation of scholastic philosophy and established the primacy of Aristotle's work. He is also remembered for his love affair with a student, the renowned Benedictine nun, abbess, and scholar. Wow. Englishman William of Ockham gave us the Summa Logicae, and arguing nominalism against Platonic realism. And of course, Thomas Aquinas gave us the tools to employ both faith and reason in the pursuit of truth. I'm just not allowed to click those, I guess. All monks and friars, of course. A great deal of work to force Aristotle to fit within the church's vision of truth. Is that so wrong? I question that these great men should have to rest, should have had to wrestle logic into what the church established by fiat and force. Ah, there's the abbey. Good memories of this place and of Father Matthias. I'm sad to hear of his passing. How'd you come to know him? How'd you come to know of Kearsaw at all? Well, my family have been pathons of Kearsaw for, oh, I don't know how many generations. Some years ago I heard that Kearsaw still had a wonderful library in artisans. Professional artists have taken over most manuscript productions. I was shocked to find an active scriptorium here. Artists remain here are quite talented, if a bit old-fashioned. Kearsaw is more than a bit old-fashioned. Some of my friends think I'm mad for commissioning a manuscript from an abbey in this day and age. But, well, my family have been patrons of Kearsaw for generations. Seems wrong to stop now while there's still talent here. Commissioned a manuscript through Father Gurnaut a year ago. Thought I would stop by and check on the progress. Wait, are you the artist working on it? It's a prayer book with 20 illustrations. I know the work, but no, I do know the artist well. The venerable brother, Piero. Oh, venerable. He still has his wits and his skills, if that's what concerns you. Piero has an incredible talent with color. And I very much look forward to seeing it. This guy has a permanent smirk on him. Plants and animals make sense for Doctor as well. That's true. You've lost time to the horses and baggage. I'm heading up to the Abbey. Yes, well. Well, let's not keep the habit waiting any longer. Well. Nuns. Quite unusual for a Benedictine house to have monks and nuns, even if they are separated. Church closed most of them centuries ago. And Kirsan was always a place out of time in more ways than one. Do you know Mother Cecilia? She seemed to recognize you. We were acquainted, yes. Let's leave it at that. Ah, you must be Father Gernot. I'm Lorenz, Baron of... Yes, the Baron of Rothfo. So wonderful to have you here again. We actually did meet on your last visit. Uh, if you say so, I am not good with remembering faces. Please forgive me, my lord, but I wasn't expecting you for another few days. Yes, I know, but I wrote ahead. I just couldn't wait to see my manuscript. I'm sure it's no trouble. We, uh, yes. I mean, no, it's no trouble. Did you want to see it now? Oh, in a moment. I could do with a bit of refreshment, though. May I grab something from the kitchen? Yes, yes, certainly, my lord. I will meet you there. Andreas, I don't know what you were doing with the Baron, but I need you in the scriptorium now. I 
is that? Book of Hours. Type of illuminated manuscript contains an abbreviated form of prayers to the divine office in addition to the under. Take the sound on me, it's not my problem. Urgh. Shit, should have asked him about an advance for the Gertner's taxes. Eh, that's fine. Maybe I could just convince Brother Mateo to pay me early. Oh, with those glasses? If all else fails, I could liberate some money from the sacristy. Probably find a way to get paid. I thought I already could get paid, but I guess not. To the shrine we go. The poor guy is blind as a bat. Ain't that the truth? It was Gertrude? Hi, Gertrude. Bless you, Master Mother. What was your work in the scriptorium? <laughs> eh, could be better. It would make you happier if I told you Agnes Steinauren received some saffron yesterday. Sh should it? Really? Where'd you hear that? Sister Matilda saw her at the Albums. Okay. Maybe you can convince Prior Fenric to get some for your yellows. Oh, that makes sense, actually. Good to know. How's Mouse Fogger? She's around here somewhere, hopefully getting to the baby rabbits before Sister Matilda does. Until later, Sister Gertrude. I'll see you, Andreas. Maybe I'll see you by the Shrine of St. Sasha one of these days. God, I'm, I must be just absolutely toasting these pronunciations. Bless you, Master. What's that exactly? Reliquary containing the hand of St. Moritz, which is said to have once held the Holy Lance. Look at you, just a fountain of knowledge, pirate. Plus you, Brother Piero? Uh, we're close. No, wait, it's Master Mulder. I thought you couldn't see Sister Margaret. Yeah, during the day, I can see some colors. How'd you know it was me? You and Brother Piero both smell of the pigments you use, but you're taller and have another smell to you, like fish or burned almonds. I'm also much more handsome. Well, I wouldn't know. God has saved me from the temptations of beautiful men. You'll just have to trust me, then. Not a chance. Have a good day, Sister Parker. Well, that's my new favorite character. Brother Mateo maintains a shrine along with some of the sisters who paint badges for pilgrims. Cool. You like her gumption? And I like the word gumption. So we are uh, agreed. To the lower abbey we go? Was that just where we were at before? To the meadow? Yeah, yeah. Where's this go? The guest house. Okay, okay. The Abbot House. Not allowed in the Abbot House. Guest House I am allowed in, though. Howdy, Miklaus. Alright. Good talk. About what I expected, I suppose. What's in the meadow? I know I'm wafting further and further away, but... Figures in the strand of St. Christopher are quite nice. Okay, I'm going to here. Iris is there. Pretty. I kind of want to talk to the old lady who just cursed that... That dude. Columbine. Yeah, yeah. Church of Drunkers, which we've been to. Church of Moritz. No drops. Yeah. Forest, we go. Shrine of Saint Sasha. The waterfall. Rotten from the books. No wonder Otto hasn't split it up. There's old Otto. Okay. We've we've gone too far off the trail. We'll be back. That is a cat with a rocket attached to it. 
That's incredible. We'll stay in the Abbey for now. I will continually avoid the Scriptorium, though. <laughs> Herbs here. We must pet the Mouse Fonger. Hello, Mouse Fonger. Good, good. Well done. Or Sophie. How are things going in the nun's kitchen? I meant no offense, Mr. Marley, but I cannot speak with that. Oh, my apologies. The others did, though. That's confusing. Many peddled sink for now. So easily some consider it a weed. Moondwort. Interesting. Here's Matilda. Bless you, Master Brother. How are you doing, Sister Matilda? Well, there's Cecilia doesn't like us talking to men unless it's necessary to perform our work. Alright. Well, you are all just... Door must leave the rest of the convent? Not for me. Prior society? Sure. Hey, do you know the Baron? And if so, how? This can take all different bounds of the same convent. Mm. Something I can help you with. Notice you took the sisters inside when I walked up with the Baron. What concern of it is yours? Oh, you said much in saying nothing. And now I will say even less. <laughs> All right. Fair enough, fair enough. Didn't realize I was gonna have a second thesaurus, or not thesaurus, but like glossary. Just watch him with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Perhaps scallion getting into trouble. That's me. Just wandering around. Where's that? The cloister. Wonder where the shelter is. Saint Luke, artist is the patron of artists is also the patron of healers. That works pretty well. It's Florian, God bless you, Hello, Florian. How are you? The brothers and sisters are well, so I am well. Thank God. Andreas, have you spoken to Klaus Strucker lately? Yeah, quite recently. Why? I believe you may be receiving a medical text from Bologna. So. The center of art. I've actually been there. Solid flex. Can you read Italian? Ah, no. Little Italian. and My Latin is not as good as I would like. I was hoping Brother Piero could help me with it if he has the time. I'm sure he'll make time. He is a patient teacher. That he is. Sister Gertrude. Who's Gertrude? Oh, yeah, she's cool. That looks like it almost stands out from the rest of the illustrations, but alas. Chapter House, Loquarium, Large Garden, Sabbath, Church, Dormitory, Cemetery. Oh my gosh. Dormitory, Old Bailey. 
What does he think you're doing, Master Mahler? Stare innocently. Stay away from the sacristy. You know you're not allowed in there. You know me. Just like to take a peek where I'm not allowed. What a uniquely fascinating and endearing trait. Stay out. Of course. My apologies. How's the sacristy today? Same as yesterday. Does my vocation seem silly to you, Master Marlin? No, I was just being friendly. Then go in peace, friend, knowing that the Abbey's treasures are secure for another day. Gotta be with you. Well, one more thing, though. I got a favor to ask you. Uh, I was hoping you could give me a pay for the latest manuscript early. This isn't part of the agreement made with Father Gernot. We paid on the completion of each additional manuscript you illuminate, not before. I have a few pages left, Elfin. Can't you make an exception just this once? Not without good reason. The savvy runs through mutual agreements, not haphazard payments. Breaking such contracts would cause undue trouble not only for Kyrsum, but for Tassing as well. The matter is pressing, Brother Mateo. For the love of another Christian, I beg you to make an exception. Ooh, that one's kind of spicy, though. I mean, that one's good, but that one's spicy. Mm. Good or spice? Good or spice? Spice. What is this about, Andreas? I would like to help the Gertners pay their taxes to the Abbey. Gertners' failure to pay their taxes have reached even you, I see. Very well. Do not ask this of me again, Andreas. I shall note this with Father Gernot and Prior Fenric. God bless you, Andreas. Well, I can give the rent early. Give it to her directly to make sure she receives it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, wait. Should I put it on the table to surprise them? No. I don't think... Yeah, we'll just give it to her directly. Never know who could take it. There's a scriptorium. Prior's house... What's that? A Volvel? I've seen these before in astronomy and medical tracks. What's this one for? God, if I know. Two wheels. The top wheel has Greek letters and holes cut out to reveal Latin letters underneath. And the outer edge of the lower wheels divided in four sections, each bearing an elemental symbol. Uh-oh. I didn't take any of these vocations. <laughs> Looks like the lines between the holes form constellations. I think they do, anyway. Quarter turn the upper disc lines a different elemental symbol with the top of the lower disc. Uh, given the number of letters and signs of the disc, there's enough space for a total of four versions of the Latin alphabet. A cipher, maybe. I need to investigate more. This has to be connected to something else around here. Yeah, like that. That right there, that looks like it's that's fine. There's, like, no mysteries going on currently, even. Like, we... <laughs> I, I haven't even touched the mysteries yet. There's Piero. I'm just poking. Poking and prodding around. Andreas, God bless you. So good to see you. Good morning, brother Piero. Good to see you as well. Change that right now. 
I don't like this weather. The bones ache. It means a storm is coming. Big Yor Gertner says if you live here 10 or 15 years, you can smell storms coming. Brother Adok's been here long enough, we can always smell him coming. <laughs> Do not forget, brother guy, the fate of the youth who jeered at the aged prophet Elijah outside of Bethel. Are you comparing yourself to a prophet, brother Adok? I am comparing you to an impudent youth whom the Lord, in his ineffable wisdom, may choose to strike down. I thought it was a funny joke. Mold, Andreas. Every slight against me stings with the fire of a thousand wasps. That seems a little exaggerated. But I will now pray to God for the strength to endure to this wickedness. Well, everyone seems quite lively. I suppose that means Prior Fenrink is not overseeing us today. He was here, but he heard Lauren's Rothvogel had arrived and he hurried out like a little mouse. Ferenc is so desperate to impress the abbot nobles like Rothvogel. It's pathetic. We feign kindness to Father Abbot and our prior when we speak about them like the spy in their backs. It's shameful. Oh, oh no, Baron Rothvogel. His manuscript. I just realized you'll want to see his manuscript. How silly of me. Of course, that's why he's visiting. Perhaps if you were younger and faster, you wouldn't need to worry so much about patrons' visits. Now, I'm a little too upset. Threatening a monk. What's wrong with you? The one mocking old men. What's wrong with you? Yeah, what's the problem? Baron's just one client. He has to wait like anyone else. Andreas Baron Rothvogel is not like anyone else. He has powerful friends, including the Prince Bishop of Freising. Interesting. Cusaw is already out of favor. Father Abbot does not want to have to deal with more attention. If Prior Ferenc isn't here, I'm going to work on my masterpiece until he arrives. Oh, that's right. I need to reference the Indermauer manuscript. What do you want, Andreas? The book, the Indermauer Manuscript, the Book of Hours. Your hair looks messy today. Did you get enough sleep? Well, what do you mean? I mean, did you sleep alone, or... Why do you want to know? It'd be nice to have something to think about during Divine Reading. <laughs> Have you considered the Lord? You really are a cloud on a sunny day, Andreas. Can you just get the book? Ugh, that's all the way upstairs. Can't you get by without it? Oh, you play? Isn't this your job? Isn't writing books your job? Sister Illuminata. Andreas needs a book and he's being inappropriate with me. <laughs> Andreas. I was being inappropriate with her. I didn't think that you were. Sister Zadina has a poor attitude towards her vocation, the rule, and, I suppose, the Ten Commandments. I imagine it takes some longer than others to accept their new lives here. She may have come around. That's charitable of you, but perhaps you are right. I should not have been so quick to judge her. In the case, I overheard you requesting the Endermar manuscript here. Please return it promptly. Andreas, may I see how your masterpiece is coming? Of course, your opinion is always welcome. Yes, the composition is lovely. There's a joyful spirit in the arrangement of the figures. Contrast of colors is also quite nice. Rich and beautiful on their own, but not overpowering the scene. Doesn't feel right. I don't know why. It's an excellent interpretation of someone else's work. What do you mean? It's all my work. Need to go steal that saffron? Could be, could be. 
My son, you're copying the illustration from the Endermeyer manuscript almost exactly. So, what's wrong with that? Haven't I improved on it? Aesthetically, yes, it's wonderful, but... I feel you have not given much thought to what it represents. It's November. In November, we show peasants leading the pigs into the forest to forage on acorns before the slaughter. Andreas, the peasants here are no longer allowed to forage acorns in the forest. Many great lords and abbots across the empire have forbidden it, even Father Grimaud. What difference does it make? This is the way November is painted. But it is not the way November is. Art is illusion, storytelling, but in their most sublime form, these images illuminate a path to truth. It's most important to me that my clients are happy. They won't pay me for truth. Yes, but with God's grace, this book of ours will outlive us all. What will it say to those who see it in a future generation, centuries beyond our comprehension? Some will gaze deep into your lines and paint to seek a deeper meaning. Will they find it? But you need not listen to my opinions. They are just the thoughts of one old monk. There's no place for the monastic scriptoria anymore. In truth, this room is a place out of time. Why is that? Why has Kearsaw kept us up for so long? Some people, some places, have a difficult time letting go of the past. I am not among them. The creation of books of art is no longer the province of monasteries. So be it. More people will be able to write, more will be able to read, and in so doing, be brought to truth. I think there will always be a place for artists like you and Brother Adok. Nah, screw you. That's it. <laughs> kind of you to say so, Andreas, but you need not be concerned for me. I've lived a long life. I'm happy to have served the Lord. When he calls for me, I'm ready. Time gone. It's already terse. Monastic hour corresponding to 9 a.m. Which talk? I must ask forgiveness for not honoring the rule. Until later, Andreas. Don't you need to tell the others you won't be there for dinner? He's going to fancy dinner in the Abbey. I thought that invite was just for the Baron. What have I done? Oh. The cipher once more, huh? Hmm. What's going on here? Uh, nothing, I assume. Andreas, what was that noise? I'm sorry, sister, I'm not, I knocked a bowl of paint to the floor, but then Prior Faring came in, wrote in one of his books, slammed it closed and left. I'm in such a hurry, I don't even think he noticed me. He was slamming books shut. Prior Faring should know better than that. Some of those manuscripts are quite delicate. He seemed to be in a great hurry. I think he is on edge since Baron Rothvogel arrived early, which is why books should not be taken out of the library unless it is necessary for divine reading or work in the scriptorium. Are you still mad at me for borrowing the Chronic of Fire? No. Anger is not an appropriate response for a nun. But the fact remains, you tricked me into giving you that book for no valid reason. You, just, you sound angry. You should not interpret my disappointment as anger. You should also understand where it is directed. It's ultimately my fault, but it's my responsibility to be more vigilant about what books you can take from the library. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. Why all this fuss about Lawrence Rothfogel? Why is Ferenc so nervous? Lawrence? I didn't know you're familiar enough with a man to use his Christian name. Anyway, I haven't dealt with him personally, but the prior and father abbot have. I only know he's purchased a number of our most valuable manuscripts over the years, and he paid enough to help the abbey when we needed it. What? What did he buy? Um, can't remember. You know, I have my own responsibilities to attend to. How about this, Andreas? If you help me recover some missing books, I'll tell you what I know about the Baron. Uh, 
suppose I could help. And really a time when I am in the scriptorium and the brothers are not present. It's for the good of the end. Where should I begin? Out there, where you and your cohort have carelessly strewn books around the scriptorium. I'll tell you what books I'm looking for. Find them and return them to me. Two volumes of the... Oh. Lanyard. Yeah. Radish covers 14 inches by 10 inches, 3 inches thick. I guess we know those. They're not his to keep. But I sure do know one. It is not one of my favorite stories, but I understand why it appeals to Pierre. Mius chose his duty to the gods over his lover, Dido. You think Aeneas' sense of duty appeals to Piero? We all have our vocations. Piero takes us more seriously than most of the others in this abbey. You clearly take your chosen vocation seriously. Andreas, I didn't have a choice in my vocation. Few women do. That's true. How would I know? Appreciate that you understand how limited our roles and choices truly are. Even in stories, we are maidens to be rescued and wed, cruel seducers of men or risen crumbs. Well, Dito, we ordinary women are merely tools in the tales of men. We can never be the protagonists of our own stories. No woman is exempt from that, from the Empress to a nun. It is our lot. I suppose I understand now why you're not fond of the idiot. It's fine poetry for men. Now, the books, if you please. You got it. Next. Wretched Guren, chivalric romance. Green cover, diamond pattern, diamond size and ledger. Hopefully, description is enough. Adoc was reading it. Okay, so that's oh, that's where Adoc was. Is that it right there? He spooks. The beauty of this book truly belies its ridiculous content. I'm surprised the Abbey owns a copy. We don't. It belongs to Amadea Rusco Lugano. Or Lugano? Lugano. It's Venetian edition. It's quite valuable. Loaned it to us five years ago. It was subsequently lost, and the Abbot has received three letters about it. I have certainly seen the brothers enjoying it. The book is not appropriate reading for Benedictine monks. Baby is sold to pirates, raised a servant, and lives a life of adventure wooing princesses and fighting in tournaments. Got the best part in the end, Gurren learns he has royal blood, the son of a duke. He reigns as a king and dies a pious hermit. What's not to love? Benedictines should be dreaming of reconciliation with our lord, not lusty adventures. I suppose you're right, it's better suited for knaves like me. It's not my place to reprimand anyone for reading stories, least of all you, Andreas. Still, we must be on guard. Fancy leads to temptation. Temptation has led to the downfall of many men and women. Sometimes, yes, but books like this, it's all the same type of fantasy, isn't it? <laughs> to die better than we are born. What's the problem with that? Why shouldn't a peasant dream of being a king? There is neither Jew nor Greek nor neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are one in Christ, but we are not equal in this world. This isn't this world you should be concerned with, Andreas, but the book must return it. Would you like the abbot to receive a fourth letter? Well, I hate to see the brothers disappointed, but I understand. It's not my goal to deprive them of their joy, but to return Amadeo Rusko's property. Free from bondage. Dark red cover. What is it? The description should be sufficient. I don't know why you're not going to tell me, but I'll find it. Uh, 
Well, now that I think about it, Guy has always been guarded about this book like he was hiding it. Very good. Please bring it here. What is this, anyway? Ah, it's in French. The soul that God touched, empty of sin in the first state of grace. What is this? Why are you asking so many questions? Just give it to me. I haven't asked so many questions. I've asked one question twice and you haven't answered me. I have good reason to not answer you. Yes. Three French bishops condemned the book. All copies were to be burned. The author shared the same fate. Why? I don't know, Andreas. It isn't my place to question the judgment of one bishop, much less three. Before you ask, no, I haven't read it. But I know it contains a dialogue between love and reason. <laughs> so, it's dangerous. Why will the bishops condemn it? Two hundred years ago. Why is, why is it still here? Because Father Matthias loved books. All books. He didn't want to see it destroyed. I can sympathize with him. It's fine, but Father Matthias is gone. It's not my place to question the former abbot's decision, but when Father Gernot learned it was in our possession, he wanted it destroyed. I didn't even know the book was here. Mother Cecilia made a note of it in the inventory when she was a librarian. Must it be destroyed? No one even knows it's here. I do. So do Mother Cecilia and Father Gernot. <sighs> Alright, take it. Mostly because I need to know about the Baron. The Baron's more important than a book to me right now. Baron Rothwell, quickly though. I need to finish here soon. I mentioned finding a copy of Historia to say. Scandalous details. Anything about the book? I've heard of it, but I've never read it, and I know little about its contents. Subject is broad, but I believe the book deals specifically with Roman occupation of this land. I'm a book burner now? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> you could have upset Father Matthias that much. I can't claim any deep insights into the abbot's mind. I understood him to be a virtuous and charitable man, sometimes to a fault. It's not always best when an abbot considers himself a friend to his brothers instead of their shepherd. Uh, some of the book have led him to a crisis of virtue. Virtue is found only in crisis. Without it, virtues are little more than ideals, so perhaps there is merit in that idea. Well, I must be off to Mass. Thank you again for your help, Andreas. Wait. How do you get to the church if you can't enter the scriptorium? I thought this was only door into the library. We are standing in the oldest part of the abbey, and like any old place, it has its share of secrets. Good day, Andreas. God be with you. Hmm. What's the bell for sext? <laughs> They're sitting down for dinner soon. See if Otto's around. Still wants to eat with me. He's working by the guest house below the abbey. And that was who I had initially promised. Let's look at this book, though. What are you doing with this book, Prior? From the churches of the university... From the library of the university of five churches, the Hungarians call it Pex. Where Frank is from. Doctor of Theology, George of Grom. Did Ferenc steal this? Text on astronomy, it looks like. Not familiar with it. Not from here, not recently. Ferenc's hand marking between the lines and in the margins. Is he notating the text for his personal use? In any case, it's a thorough commentary. Astrological symbols. I didn't learn Greek! But the Volvel I found also had Greek letters on it. They must be connected, but how? The outer ring of the Volvel is marked with alchemical symbols, but the cipher has astrological symbols. Something's I suppose I'll figure it out in due time, but I'll copy this down now to reference later. Hmm. 
Don't come from almost anything else that we need to look at. Anything in the dormitory? Nope. Not at all. Already went to the prior's house. Cemetery? I'm just gonna take a peek at everything, I think. I went to the founder of the Abbey. One was donated by a descendant. Sure. Dormitory, which we've seen, church, which we've seen, refectory, primary auditorium, large garden, more quarry, infirmary. Let's just keep on looking at stuff. The Dance of Death mural. I really wanted to click on that, but it's fine. Artistic allegory on the constancy of death. And the abbot's house is there. Poke around the abbot's house. Just kidding. I'm just gonna pet their dog, I guess. Good pup. Lower abbey, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Andreas, have you seen Brother Rudiger? No, why? Because he was not at Louds and no one has seen him since then. Why does it do that? Do you think something's happened? I think after you terrified him in the library, he decided it was safer to run. Sorry, didn't mean to cause him this much distress. Yes, you couldn't have known how sensitive he is. Still, you did threaten him. Threaten us. It's no small thing. If it's not returned or something has happened to him, I will hold you responsible. Uh, I mean, you're worried about nothing. I don't know what that. Wait. Isn't this. Isn't this that guy? Isn't this. Didn't you just. Am I crazy? Isn't this the guy? <laughs> Am I nuts? Ooh. Gurnot didn't even say God bless you. I have no idea what I did to scare that person, because the only guy I yelled at was Guy, and he's right there. I 
Is it the cellar? Large garden. Nothing here. I mean, I guess I suppose I shouldn't expect anything crazy, but it's just always very interesting to poke around this this world. Endress makes these. All oh, right, the Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the abattoir. I think that's it in the abbey. I don't think we've missed anything else. Probably. Because that's scripting, yeah. I guess let's poke around the church to see if there's a guy hiding somewhere. Oh, right, the crypt in the tower. There's still a couple things here. This is when I could have poked into the sacristy tree. But, nah. Okay. Mm, nothing here. But it's good to orient ourselves early as well. Two markers go back centuries all the way to the founding of the Abbey. I have a Diedrich from the height of Kursaw's power in the 14th century. Those days have long passed. Investigate. Love the relief of the virgin and child. Shame it's hidden down here. What about this? Uh, what about that? That was it. The Secret entrance to the library. I have to remember this. But I'm not actually allowed in. They did say. There were ways in. Hmm. Hmm. And hmm. Nothing else there. I see you. Otto still wants to have dinner. Yeah, I mean, let's let's go actually check out all the forest stuff, shall we? That's the church and druckers again. Smokey, Mr. Baller. Yes. Not once before, I think you were drawing something by the uh, waterfall. I'm Smokey. Well, Adam, but people call me Smokey. And charcoal burner. Yes, yeah, so I have to stay out here in the forest near the kiln. Is there anything I can do for you? No, just being friendly. Oh, of course, good to see you. Until next time. Right. Charcoal burner. Boss clock. Hello. You're not a local, are you? No, I'm staying in Tassing. I'm going for smoky friend of yours. No, I mean, I didn't know before coming to Tassing, but he let me stay with him, so yes, I suppose he is. People don't much like Romani. Most folk despise anything that's different. I'm staying on the edge of town. Search to find whatever is different. It's differences in the artist style that make their work unique. Or the artist thing in Cursal. Nice to meet you. Most folk in Tassing don't come down here to talk. Yeah, Vosklov. Traveling tinker. Travel place to place, sharpen knives, mend small things need mending, that sort of thing. Brought you to Tassing, Vosklov. Well, I uh, actually came to visit the library. Hope for one of the monks to read them to me, but the abbot wouldn't let me in. He's a grumpy old man. He has half a mind to throw me out of the scriptorium most days. 
He does seem like an angry man. He threatened to expel me from Tassie entirely. What are you looking for? Uh, well, I explained that I was looking for a text about the elements. They're primordial, as Aristotle says, and God didn't create them. They exist with him since the dawn of time. Fascinating idea. Not only that, but it explains the presence of the angels and demons before the creation of the world. Of the five elements, angels are fire and air, and demons are water and earth, and the world was ether before the Lord found it. That's why Satan appeared as a snake to you. Snakes can only dwell in deep caves and pools. I'm not so sure about that one. I'm just going to keep on encouraging him, though. None of your stature would entertain such ideas with someone like me. Anyway, I should get back to work. Until later, boss. I mean, what do I know? I'm a 16th century artist. Looks quite old. Okay. Nothing else there. Okay, cool. That's how the town made money before the Imperial Road opened up. Hmm. Want to find her later, I suppose. She's an old widow, right? If I remember correctly. Gosh, Roman ruins, too. Lenhart. Morning. I don't think it is. I think it's dinner. Gertner's border, aren't you? How could you tell? Well, you don't smell like sheep. Quite unlike the Gertners. Hey, they're good people. Or peasants, maybe. Not a curious one among them, excepting... How is she, by the way? She's fine. Why? Only curious. She used to bring their barley to me. Peter insists on delivering it now. Shame. She's on some curiosity about the mill. I'd hope to foster that. As a Dutch person, I do enjoy uh, marvelous windmills. It's only a range of hills. Uh, river. Actually. Of course. I misheard you. Ah, of course. You misheard me. Only windmill in Bavaria, did you? Constructed in exacting detail from Dutch specifications. The gem of the Alps, and none of the incurious adults here can appreciate it. Except you. Mm, yes, I'm sure it's the peasants who are the problem. Well, you're a... You're a turd. Else. Good morning, uh... Forgive me, I've forgotten your name. Andreas Smaller, master artist. Master at such a young age, it's impressive. Well, I admit. Nope, I'm just gonna foster. I'm definitely a master. So you're very well educated and hardworking then. <laughs> to disagree with. No, kind of you to say so. We're not officially lying. Don't get to properly introduce somebody else. Moolery? Yes, that's me. Her Clara and Eva had an artist boarding with them. That must be very exciting. Well, they seem to have enjoy uh, having someone new in the home. Perhaps I have a more than Clara. No, I only met living on a farm among the townspeople. Isn't that very lively? Only when ill Peter wakes in the night and can't find the chamber pot. Ursula brings some joy to the household, though. True. Such a lovely little girl. Pray the Lord may someday bless us with a daughter. You finish your gavel? There's work needs doing. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I have to get to my labors. Well. You know what? I'm still going to pet the dog, because the dog hasn't done anything wrong. Mission accomplished. 
And there's Paul. Hello. Alright, I don't think we've talked before. Andreas staying with the Gertners. Oh, but you're not a farmer. Why are you living with the farmers? Why don't you be bored with them while I work in the scriptorium? You're a monk? I'm an artist. Oh, like you do drawings? Drawing, painting, calligraphy. It goes in the book. I can put it there. Who's that? How do you get money? I mostly help with commissions. It's a job, just like being a miller's job, but it's also a calling. I didn't... My dad says... My dad says drawing's stupid. It's not worth anything. Your dad's wrong. Not where he can hear. Do you like to draw, Paul? Yes. More than anything, but I have to do it where my dad can't see. He gets mad. My dad doesn't like some of the things I do, either. That's why I don't tell him. Can I tell you a secret? Nothing on this earth would please me more, young Master Mueller. 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 Sometimes I draw on the ruins in the meadow where dad can't see. Romans would have been honored. They loved defacing monuments. I don't know what that means. Don't worry about it. It's funny. You'll get it in a while. What do you draw? Cats? Mom? I don't know. Stuff. Probably shouldn't be talking to you. Dad won't like it. Probably right. I'll go. Till later, Paul. Hey, keep drawing, alright? I feel like I've inspired uh, rebellion, and this makes me happy. Oh, and there's the drawings. Paul's drawings. Excellent drawings, Paul. You should be very, very proud. Alright. Let's go have supper. Alright, what are you doing here? Oh, Andreas, can't you see I'm busy? You know, if you're looking to pilfer from the Baron, I'd recommend smaller valuables. What are you talking about? I'm not. You shouldn't be standing out here, though. It's far too obvious. Is it? I mean, be quiet. I'm not doing anything. It's been a busy day. I'm having a break, enjoying the sun. Nothing more. Listen, I'm trying to help you not get in trouble, you idiot. Eat shit. <laughs> I'm done talking. You know, I tried. Good day, Master Waller. Oh, Andreas, good to see you. Trust Clara gave you my message. Afternoon, Andresado. Where did give me your message? Sorry I missed you this morning. I was still asleep when you came by. Oh, Abbott really lets you get away with anything, doesn't he? Ooh, Beato, I'm hungry. Let's pray. Oh, maybe this was lunch. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts which we are about to receive from your bounty. Thoroughly Christ our Lord. How'd the morning treat you? Not too bad, thanks. I hurt my damned hand splitting timber to replace a bad beam in the abbot's house. It's not that bad of an injury, it just galls me that the abbot bleeds a stride and we're expected to do work here when it suits him. Select food item to eat? Oh my goodness. Uh, oh. Oh, oh boy. This is the biggest decision of my life. Why can't I combine these two? This is an adventure game, right? You can go buying things in your inventory. Make the world's first sandwich. Save the cheese for last. Well, it's not all bad. You get a lot of good work from the Abbey. Casting Pilgrim's Badge isn't really smithing, but I don't mind. Anyway, saw you walking with that bear in Rothwell in the middle on your way up here. What's that all about? I think he may be here to pressure Brother Piero to finish the manuscript he's working on. Maybe. Don't like the idea of Piero being pressured by anyone. He's too old for that. He's a nobleman. Everything must happen on their time. Just like with the abbot. His work always comes first, and damn the common folk. Eh, this abbot, anyway. Matthias was more reasonable. I think I've said, like, ten different versions of Matthias, so... Just stick with it. <laughs> Late I was well acquainted with the Baron, you know, but he always had misgivings about him. What kind of misgivings? Fools around with young women. He's married, of course. 
I don't know, that's only gossip. It isn't Christian to spread rumors like that. It's not gossip that he beat up that farmer a few years back. Oh, Moronic. May he rest in peace. Figured out. Figured out why. Got it. Uh, Otilia is the old woman who cursed him. That makes sense. Well, I wasn't there, so I don't know. But if he did that, yes, it speaks poorly of his character. You didn't mention anything about that. What did you talk about, then? I mean, no offense. What does a nobleman have in common with an artist? Um... He could sense my inherent moral quality out of... Right, St. Andreas in the flesh. As if a rich bastard like him has any sense of virtue. It's bitterness and envy are not good for our Christian souls, Otto. It's not envy, Andres. No one should get away with what he does, what the savvy does. No offense to you, Andreas. I don't have any problem with the books the Abbey makes. I mean, I never did learn to read, but if people are paying the Abbey to make them, it doesn't bother me. Maybe I just... Am I going to nudge this place into revolt? <laughs> I don't like that abbot, so. Uh, Bower sheep escaped the grazing fields again. No, but I'm not surprised. Martin was supposed to fix that fence, and he probably did a bad job at it. He's always in a foul mood, and he could be the laziest soul in Tassin. Can't even hold a hammer properly. Married and a father at such a young age, and he barely lifts a finger for his wife and child. That man is married? He looks like he's 12. That checks out, actually. Damn thief. And before you say it, Andres, that's more than gossip. Look at him. Over by the guest house, probably figuring out what he can steal the least amount of effort. He's born shirker, sure enough. I know one when I see one. Especially when you look in a mirror. Speaking of the bower sheep, their ewes are shorn and the women will be spinning it soon. Otto. I got it, Andres. No need to tease. What God wants to happen will happen. Storm's coming. You should probably get back to it. Yeah. Alright. I'll catch up in a moment, Andres. Andreas, uh, say a little Evo for me if you get a chance. I'll try to remember. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody likes that. Time to get back to work. Martin, you're, you're still just staring there. Okay. Um... Well, I don't think I've met you. Well, they're Master Marley. I've seen a nicer view. Don't get sights like this in the cities, I expect. I'd say Nuremberg has as many Roman ruins. No? Oh, yes. Tassin's full of them. Quite the marvels they are. Don't pay much mind to the writing on them, as I can't read Latin myself, but you might enjoy giving them a look. If you do, you have to tell me if they match the old legends I read about. Oh, well, and Father Mateus was abbot, and he would let me borrow books from the Abbey's library. I think I read through half that library before Father Gurnock became abbot. I like how he adjusts how they... talk, depending on his adjustment of their intelligence in his own mind. He and Father Thomas are strict about which books should be read now. Books should glorify God, they say, not discuss the old pagan ways. Still, the accounts of the Romans and passing are my favorite. A little book talked about how the Roman knight Gaius Metellus defeated the, uh, Ranti, I think it was? Heavy snowfall had him in this very valley. Barbarians on all sides when Mars sent a wolf in the night. Instead of killing the beast, Gaius followed it to a magical spring with trees covered in all sorts of fruit. Mars provided the wolf in the spring, and Gaius Metellus founded Tassing after defeating the barbarians to honor Mars. Roman God of War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where this all came from. 
I'm surprised Kier saw his any record of tasking before St. Lawrence arrived. And written in German at that. Might be all fable, but I enjoy the story all the same. It's nice to feel you're connected with those who came before you, even if it's only by the land you live on. Wise words. Good chat, you master. Right, let's be back to work. Alright. A new person. I don't think anyone new is going to be in the... The mill. The widow. I don't think we've done that yet. Oh, that one's new. France Bauer House. There's France. I'm doing this. Okay. Oh, France likes me very much. Curious. Is this who I think it is? It is. Want something? I would love to talk to you actually about uh, your problem with the Baron, but uh, I guess not now. It's just something to store in the old nog. Central town. Ooh. Oh my gosh! Is that uh, pretzels? North town. Stein hour. Oh, we gotta pet the cat at the very least. There's a lot more to this town, but I think we'll leave that for later. We'll go from there. Let's go. Nah, just to the forest. That makes sense. Back to work, I suppose. I think they're gonna be missing some of their books, though. No, no. What's going on here? I don't see Andreas. I don't want to what are you doing out here? I thought you were aware that in addition to my role as Kearsaw's sacrist, I tend to the Shrine of St. Lawrence. He is the patron of Tassim and Kearsaw both, so it's my duty to ensure his reliquary is well cared for. I heard of St. Lawrence provides inspiration to us all. Familiar with the life of St. Lawrence, are you not? Afraid I don't make habit of learning about every saint I come across. Well, yeah, let's learn something about Tassim's patron saint while you're here. <sighs> Very well. Cough. St. Moritz is most widely known for his martyrdom at the hands of the Romans. He protected the town of Christians from slaughter, and in turn, he and his legion were decimated. He was a Roman soldier. Yes, Roman citizen, led a legion made up entirely of Christians into Bavaria. When he refused to kill the Christians, even though they were traitors to Rome, the emperor had his legion massacred. Most of the pilgrims who visit come knowing only this, if anything, about his life. However, Tassing venerates Moritz because he was the one to convert the town and save it from destruction. Yes, I've been hearing about some of the pagan history in town. <laughs> there are some in Tassing who still cling to the pagan traditions. Yes, God save them. St. Moritz and his legion were snowed into this past. The pagan townsfolk refused to aid them. The daughter of the town's leader, Sasha, was moved in spirit and snuck from the town to convert. So the Moritz to spring, as soon as she was baptized, the snow melted, revealing all manner of fruits. Moritz and his legion were saved by these miraculous gifts. The town was converted, and the rebels fled into the mountains. Uh, what happened to Sasha? She, too, was martyred for her faith by the rebels inhabiting the town. Now her shrine protects Tassing from harm. Huh. See, the mysteries of our saints have overwhelmed your intellect. Many are affected, so... <laughs> okay. Yeah, who's Carl? Oh, hello, Andreas. Hello, oh, Carl. You seem busier than usual today. I did my work. Went up to the Shrine of St. Moritz this morning to pray for his aid. Candle I lit us all but burned away. I was there so long. I need to catch up. Dedication is... You know the Shrine often. 
go every autumn for a good harvest now that Helena's pregnant and trying to go pray every week. Her mother had trouble in childbirth, so I've been paying visits to Moritz's hand and Sasha's shrine to pray for their aid. Well, I hope they hear your prayers. Thank you, Andrea. So do I. Um, I'm still pondering the saffron. But I don't see her around. Maybe in the kitchen? Because I don't know if she's a nun or just like the cook. Volkbert. Alright. Good day to you, Volkbert. Sabat. I'm surprised to see you still here. As am I, but I will be leaving soon, returning to Rome. I and my bishop regret that we could not reciprocate Father Ordolf's generosity earlier. He showed much kindness to our priests at the Council of Constance many, many years ago. A hundred years ago. Oh, you're made in Rome? It's up to my bishop, but I don't miss these mountains in any case. You can travel to Ethiopia, Mr. Marlin, and see the highlands. That's must my home with a wondrous beauty. Love to someday. Still need to return to Nuremberg and open my workshop. Yes, someday. Till then, if you're ever in Rome, I may still be around. I don't like that. By the way, if you have some time in the next few days, it'd be nice to share a meal with you and some of the townsfolk. I'm accustomed to strange looks, especially in rural places like these, but I have had kind words with a baker and his wife. And yes, the Albans. I'll have to tell a story of the children and their mothers over a meal someday. Gret seemed excited about the idea, but I'd be more comfortable if you were there as well. I can certainly make time. Any saffron? Lucas, you are not you are not Mr. Saffron, I assume. Hello, Andreas. Brother Wajlov. Working behind. Not too bad. He's nice to me. It's Father Abbott and Brother Pryor who make things hard. Well, so, I shouldn't complain. I just like the food a certain way, and I'm not that good at cooking yet. I'll teach you all in time. He not complains about his food too, but he complains to Brother Wajlov. What does he not know about food anyway? He's from Cornwall. I don't even know where that is. It's the land of the West, across the sea where all they eat is fish. Sounds miserable, but that's what he always complains about, the fish. He just likes to complain, I think. Don't lose heart, Brother Lucas. We're still learning. Good, good enough. Alright, back to work. I just get so distracted with all the possibilities. Was she yet recovered from Easter Mass, Rudiger? Oh, yes. It was a bit of a strain, but a worthy sacrifice. The Lord could give us his all on Easter. Exactly. This work. I don't know where to start. Inconsistent spacing, rough strokes, working like you want this place closed. Weather prior, I'm working to the best of my abilities, and I dispute your criticism. I may not be fast, but I still have my talent. Praise be to God. And Brother Guy, why are you still on this page? What's wrong with you? Normally you're so reliable. Any apologies, Brother Pryor. I'll work hard. can't believe this. Baron Rothfogel has come to check on his progress in this. This is all you have? Should have finished this months ago. Is your mind so corrupted by age you didn't notice the seasons have changed? Well, you're not the one who will have to answer for it, so why should you care? Typical. Just shut up. Uh, 
You impudent knave. How dare you speak to me like that? I'm the master of the scriptorium. It's my place to run the scriptorium as I see fit. I agree, Brother Pryor. Brother Piero's work is unacceptably slow. You're insufferable, Brother Pryor. God, give me the patience to endure this. Please, everyone, this is my work, and I'll accept responsibility for it. Brother Pryor Farank is right. Hey, so I may have procrastinated a little bit. Prior fairing, is this mine? It must be, yes. It is my lord, I can explain. No, no, I don't want excuses. I've come all this way, and I have to be honest, I expected more. It's nowhere near finished, and the style is, well, it's very old fashioned. Thought I made my desires clear. I feel like my generosity towards Kearsaw is being taken advantage of. Am I the fool in this sad story? I, no, of course not, my lord. Never. We'll fix this, of course, of course. We only want to accommodate you. More drinks. Good to see you again. Just nod, don't we take that out. Good to see you. It's Oh, he didn't like that. Ah, I don't care. Why not have Andreas complete the rest of the illustrations? He's clearly capable. Well, my lord, why not have Brother Guy completed if speed is your... No, no, I'm not talking about the script. That's fine. But the art, the illustrations. I want Andreas to do the others. Of course, I mean, if Andreas is all right with it... I mean, I'm, I'm trying to finish my masterpiece here. Andreas, you would do well to remember who it is that's making the completion of this masterpiece possible. Ah, uh, well... If it takes the pressure off Piero, I guess I'll do it. Just allays your concerns, my lord. So, by the way, Father but am I still welcome at your table for supper? Naturally, my lord. Wonderful. I'd like Andreas to join us. Yeah, I already made plans with the Drucker family in town, so... Nonsense. Keep with them any day. I'm only here for the evening. Oh, Father. Ah, oh, well, that would be quite unusual. Unusual or not, I doubt my good friend the Prince Bishop would deny additional guests at his table. What do you think? I understand. Yes, you're right, of course. Andreas may join us for supper. Can I skip this? He said it earlier, but he invited me there. Eh, either way. You had this planned. You must have put your book in the Baron... Your hook in the Baron this morning when you ambushed him in town. Yeah, that's beyond ridiculous. Listen to yourself. Brother Pryor, Andreas is not to blame for any of this. I am. Yes, you are. You've embarrassed me, the abbot, and the abbey. Eric is right, of course. No wonder we don't get more commissions. Can you stop flattering the prior for one minute? I, I wish I could say both of these things. They're annoying me to no end. You're so insincere and you're so obvious about it, guy. Brothers! you please, sisters Dana and I would prefer it if you could keep the noise down. Sounds like Samson slaying the Philistines in here. Of course. Go back to work. Everybody. That was not wonderful, but there's nothing to be done about it now. I'll finish my work here and wash up in the lavatorium for supper at the abbot's table. Can I not, though? Can I st I would love to just skip it. That would tickle me to no end. I'm gonna we're gonna talk to the guy first, and we'll see if I can at least talk to him. We talked to him earlier just to see if it was like a possible thing, but 
I'm still uh, trying to steal from the Baron. Okay. Good for you, Martin. Very, very inconspicuous. Excellent stuff. Can I talk to the Druckers? Apparently not. It's probably about to be acquainted with the length of rope. How long of a rope do you think exactly? <laughs> uh, I can't. Uh, I'd much rather go to the... <laughs> you can't walk with me, pretend we're friends, and then say that I need your honor. That's not how these things work. And even if they are, I don't care. I wish I could just go back to the... Um... No, not that. But the Druckers. The Druckers seem nice. I'd rather have dinner with the Druckers. Wash my hands in the courtyard lavatorium. Of course. Humblest apologies. Andreas, I'm so glad you'll be joining us for supper. Those circumstances are unusual, to be sure. We'll be able to speak with you, and the brothers will, but it will be good to have you with us. I always enjoy our talks. Well, the same doesn't apply to you at the Abbot Stable. You can talk all you like, though I wouldn't recommend it. Father Abbot does not look kindly on idle chatter. Wish you could take my place, Brother Pierre. You deserve the honor. I like this guy. Anyways, I'm sorry for how the prior treated you. It's not fair. It's humiliating. Oh no, no, my son. There's no need to worry about me or my pride. And we all need to taste humility from time to time to keep our feet on this earth. No, Andreas, you are my pride. I cannot claim to have taught you much, but I am proud to have known you and your work. And when you leave all of us at Kearsall Abbey behind, you can call upon your friend Lawrence, the Baron Rothwell, will help you in your career. He's just a genuine guy. As opposed to the actual guy, named guy, who's not a genuine guy. He's a disingenuous guy. He's wrong, you know. Farrakh is wrong about you being slow. Don't trouble yourself over it. Time passes for us all. Things change. The future will right over the present. You need not fear it, any of it, so long as you remain true to yourself and God. Now I must hurry to the refectory to join my brothers. I will see you inside. Yeah, I like Pure a lot. He's just such a pleasant dude. No wonder I enjoy our talks. Yes, I'm glad you could join us. Thank you. I wish I could just keep saying his name. Father Gurnot, Father Thomas. Thomas! Thomas. Prior Farrick. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Oh, Gospel of Matthew, wonderful. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. This was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Have you read Matthew much, Andreas? Uh, you know, I'm more of a Luke guy myself. Um, I'm sure I have. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really care about you. I don't like any of these three. And then, you're cool. You suck. You seem alright. You've got an eye patch, so you're cool. You're old. And you're the best. And you seem fun. And I've never met you. And I like this guy. Who's drawn in like a different design entirely, which I think is super cool. And this guy sinks.
Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Reminds me, Father Gernot, have you read anything by Martin Luther? I, I can't say that I... There's some incredible ideas about the church. Brilliant, I think. My lord, is the meal to your liking? I believe I remember you enjoying our quail on your last visit. Quail? My god, Father. The quail's fine. Don't you think Luther's ideas are worth discussing? He's talking about the future of the church, shaking things up in a way I don't think we've seen before. Father Thomas, there's any value in his ideas, do you not? Thomas is like, please stop asking. Oh god, everybody doesn't like this. My word, I mean no offense, but I do not. Brother Mateo, yes. What are your thoughts on Luther's attacks on the church's sale of indulgences? I remember the sale of indulgences. I remember being taught about it. You could basically buy uh, freedom from sins. I think there was an official term for it, but... Baron, please do not involve the other brothers in this conversation. What about Andreas? God, leave me out of this. Do you see everyone looking at you? Everybody. Furrowed brow. Very concerned. I can't see the brows. Uh, very angry. Angry. Uh, angry. Very concerned. Concerned. This dude is chilling. I don't know. Angry. Piero wants to be done with this. He's really put me in a difficult position. I need to be quiet. I don't know what else to do. Uh, sorry, can't do it. Two hundreds. I expected more of you. I don't really care, Lawrence. I think you're kind of a pile of garbage. Enough. Lord Rothfeld, you are a guest and held in high esteem, but you have worn out my patience. You will not be discussing Luther's work with Andreas, Thomas, Matteo, or with any other brother. Is that clear? I suppose, Father, it is your abbey, but you're taking much too much offense at this, and you're far too afraid of change. Whether it's from Luther or someone else, reform is coming to the church. You'd better accept it. What? Neither you nor Martin Luther dictate change to the Holy Church on their whim. This talk is beyond insulting. It's blasphemous. Outrageous. How dare you? I see. Overstep my bounds, and I suppose I've ruined everyone's supper. My apologies. In spite of this unpleasantness, I will make good on my manuscript payment and the donation of my copy of Historia Tessae. If you cannot accept what the future will bring, perhaps it's time for you to come to terms with your past. Let me know where my welcome, fathers, brothers, Andreas. Good night. Well, that was uncomfortable. I had a great time. Thanks, Andreas, for not letting him engage you in this debate. No good would have come of it. I mean, I was tempted. Now then, I must ask you to leave so I can speak to the brothers in chapter privately. Peter, please accompany Andreas out. Yep. <laughs> Tom was like, well, <sighs> time to get going. He invited me to stoke things up. Yeah, but the problem is, I don't like him. <laughs> Don't worry about Father Gernon and the Baron. I'm sure it'll all be fine by morning. I hope Father Abbott can see the Baron's heart is in the right place, even if you pick the wrong time to express himself. That seems unlikely. I mean, it may be so, but we must never lose hope. In any case, do hope the Baron respects the Abbot's wishes for the rest of his stay, for everyone's sake. sake. Hey, Piran, what do you think of Martin Luther's ideas? Ha! Those were younger and wiser men than me to decide. I'm just a monk, thank God. Good night, my son. Snoozles. An awkward supper. Alright, I'm gonna get a drink. I'll be back.
Alright. Oh, so this is a fascinating thing. I don't have to think about it other than it's very interesting. Huh. Still a lamp burning in the guest house. I was like, I wonder what he's doing. What was he thinking? He's a baron. We couldn't have expected that to go well. Storm doesn't seem to be letting up so anytime soon. I should get back to Gertner's. But why would you draw my attention? Okay, sure. I think so. You've seen a ghost. There must be a better explanation than that. Well, I'm not here to tell you what you saw. Wouldn't be the first time people have seen ghosts around these parts. Have you ever seen one? Mm -hmm. Usually around the ruins. Who knows so many restless Romans lie beneath these stones. I think I found Johan's last lost sheep. I'm gonna head home. Take care, Master Rattler. You too. One well-trained sheep? I'd follow that guy. He seems pleasant. Ah, no! Pale horse still on the floor. Uh, hello, you all right in there? Matson's Matson's the pale horse. Death. Two a.m. Sister, listen to my voice. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes. That's why we're here. Am I here? Is this now? Yes, you are with us, and this is now. I apologize, Andreas. I imagine that must have been quite alarming. Is she alright? She is, yes. Amelie is a mystic, gifted with visions when God sees fit to give her one. Some are more frightening than others. How long has she been here? She's been sealed in the cells next to the church for almost ten years now. If you come to Mass more often, you can see I give her communion through a window to her cell. Her cell? She's an anchoress, a religious hermit so devoted to God she's enclosed herself in a cell next to the church. She's dead to the world, but continues a life of prayer and religious contemplation. And sometimes, ever so rarely, she receives great and terrible visions. Is she, uh, local to Tassing, or is she a nun at Kursaw? Neither. She came here from a Benedictine abbey in Lower Bavaria after it burned down. I am her confessor and caretaker. Many anchoresses are not literate. I write down her visions to help interpret them. Thought all the monks and nuns at Kursan could read, even poor brother Volkbert. What's wrong with Volkbert? Hey Matt, how you doing? Thank you, Mother Thomas. I must rest now. Oh, we've adjusted the text. Of course, sister. Sounds like she is in a great deal of pain. She is. She feels a pain that is both physical and spiritual. Spiritual pain comes from her revelations. They come and go. I try to address them as best I can. Physical pain comes from her deformity in her spine and aching in her joints. I know of no cure for that, save prayer to the Almighty. Sterling was saying she had a vision of death. Could someone be in danger? Oh no, don't rush the judgment. Her visions are divine and powerful, but they could have many meanings. I think someone's going to turn up dead tomorrow. Some of her revelations take years to comprehend. Some may never be understood at all, as God wills it. Still, argument at dinner was quite troubling. Perhaps it has cast a shadow over our thoughts. Now then, since sister appears to have fallen back to sleep, I must prepare for bed myself. Good night, Andreas. Mm. I wish I could run into Mr. Drucker. And say sorry. Give the old poppy juice. <laughs> oh god.
Ill Peter is existing. Everybody, good lord, how many people are on that bed? No, not the snores. Not the snores! Anything else? Nope, we're okay, good. It's getting late. I should get some rest. Let's go to sleep. Oh, I love that cap. Said at matins there would be death, which means someone may be killed at 2 a.m. It's all right, Ursula. Norm, do you need any help with Ursula? No, a little crying won't hurt her. Besides, I think we've gotten almost all the leaks now. Ursula is my first child. She's uh, been a handful, but I think I have the hang of it now. Big Yorg's been a godsend. Yeah, I, I know Big Yorg. I helped Christine with Evo when she was a baby. Never took you for a family man, Andreas. Well, their brothers both married. Plenty of nieces and nephews play uncle too. Appreciate the offer. I'll make a fine husband someday, Andreas. Uh, the storm let up. It's been going all morning. Peter and Yorg are outside trying to deal with the flooding as best they can. Is the farm in danger? There's always a danger with this much rain, but we've lived through worse. Whatever happens, it will be as God wills it. We must have faith in providence and endure what is to come. Oh, I have some food for you. I appreciate it. Sorry I couldn't prepare anything more. Didn't Otto ask me to say hello? I was probably courting her. <laughs> I'm a rap scallion. It's nothing, really. I mean, this is probably a compliment in the 1600s, <laughs> but not so much anymore. <laughs> True. Eh, at least you're honest about it. Good day at the Abbey. Andreas trying to stay here. So, too. Good luck. Be good, Ursula. Actually, no, I I need to give the I need to give the tax money. Ah, oh boy, Andreas. I didn't see the wall was broken. Is that from the flood? It is. Must have broken in the night. Some of our sheep escaped. I'll have to track them down later. This is the way it always is. Rain falls in the abbey and rolls downhill to us little people. It's hard to blame the abbey for that. That's just how rain works. The reason we're down here and they're up there, Andreas. Anyway, I have to get back to this. See you later. For you, so I'm gonna have to pay my rent and tax you over the enemy. This is far more than your rent payment, Andreas. We can't accept this. It's the least I can do. Andreas, how did you even find so much coin? Are you sure you have enough to spare for yourself? I have my ways. No secrets, Andreas. I won't pry. Thank you. You don't know what this means to us. Happy to help. Paid in full. Nice. Hey, Andres. How you doing? So, I don't need that, huh? Yes, what about them? 
Come on, tell me juicy details about what's going on between them. I'm not a gossip on this. I do not ask this to pour water on the rumor mill, but for the concern I have for the happiness of my friends. Of course, fancy talk for big nosy Andreas. If you ask me, I think Anna's being a bit too slow about it. He's old enough already not to be smitten like a boy. We both like each other. Seems to me if you found the right person, you should go for it. That's what I would do. Where is Mistress Schmidt? You may ask. Oh, uh, that's a private matter. Just haven't found the right person? No. I, uh, we hope to find someone down at my side as we build a family. God has not given me this blessing. Could happen to anyone. Don't worry. One hopes so. Yeah, let's get back to work. Enough talk. Central town. Let's try and talk to the baker. Okay, and baker doesn't want to talk to us. That's fine. Anna. Hi, Anna. Gret. Andrea, it's such a pleasure to see you. Looking so handsome as always. Back for more of my rye. Here, Grant. You know I can't stay away from your ride. Andreas. Passing by, I thought I should say hello. Now I must say goodbye. Man, you're always welcome here, Andreas, and always welcome to my ride. Be well. To be honest, I'm more of a Chibata person, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. Gotta be with you, Andreas. Seems like we have a good spring storm, though I hope it lets up soon. I'm sure it will. Oh, Rook, I paid Grep for last week's pumper nickel. Sorry to make you wait for it. No trouble at all. You say a little lucky for me. Oh, yeah, the stonemason. Of course, I'm off to home and then to the Fikers. Alright, so what's going on at the Fikers? Helena has about a month to go before her child is due. The last one was hard. We need to make it, God rest his soul. Just want to give her the best chance she can have. It's in God's hands. Trust in providence. Always, old Rick, but I'll do what I can to help. I make the Lord do all the work. Must be off now. Wait, can I have some of your saffron? Alas. No dice. Right, nothing here. We haven't seen North Town, have we? More ruins, locked door, and more wood work. All right. Good enough, good enough. Gotta go apologize to the Druckers. I can't apologize to the Druckers because they aren't there. That is not the Drucker. That's the Stonemation. Father, I've said this before. It isn't good the water drains here so quickly. It's affecting the foundation. It needs to be looked at. I understand, but if you dig here, you may be disturbing the bodies decomposing in the yard. Of course, Father, but they're going to be dug back up again anyway. Yes, yes, but why disturb them unnecessarily? It's your church, Father, but you can't put this off forever. The foundation is going to crack. <laughs> I understand. Perhaps after some of the bones have been moved to the ossuaries. Thank you, Lucky. Mm. Good day, Mr. Lucky. Didn't mean to eavesdrop. Oh, worry not. Lucky was just reminding me of the danger severe rainfall composed to the foundation. I looks after his flock, but sometimes the pen requires an earthling hand. And take care of. God be with you, Andreas. Yes, yes, of course. Two. How's it going? Cool. Martin, um, what you what you did what you done did, Martin? Get a friendly greeting from Martin. Perhaps Scallion background, told Martin to help his family, gave him thieving advice, ended the conversation, man. 
fail you. Eat shit, Andreas. Chew. That was our first possible interaction, was it? God, now I've got to think about how I treat everybody. That's awful. I would hate that. I'm not going to get any good results if I keep doing that. It's fine. Be close. Got anything? Trying to leave even this weather? The weather is unfortunate, but the Baron's wife, Lady Salomea, will be arriving today. The Lord intends to depart as soon as she arrives. How long have they been married? Seven years now. She's a fine woman, true lady. He's hoping to bid farewell to the Baron before he leaves. I'm sure he would appreciate that. He spoke highly of you before he went to bed. Disappointed you didn't debate him at supper, but he understands that you didn't want to anger the abbot. Part of the art of rhetoric is understanding the right form in which to persuade someone. He always wants to discuss things when the mood hits him. He's often alone and feeling it, unfortunately. Is there any chance I could redeem myself in the Baron's eye? Perhaps not on this occasion. I believe you may have offended the Baron some other way as well. Or some ways. We'll not fret too much about it, Master Miller. He's forgiving me. Where's he gone, then? Went for a walk. He didn't say when he'd be back. That seems odd, given the weather. Not odd for him. My lord enjoys hiking in all sorts of weather. A little rain never bothered him. I can sympathize. We Swabians enjoy a good walk through nature, even in such conditions. Well, sorry for taking up so much of your time, Miklops. Oh, one more thing before you go. You see a sort... Surly looking young man in a hat on the way up this morning. Uh, surely you don't mean me. <laughs> no, surely you by two hands at least. Uh, yeah. I might have gone with Sullen or Whiny, but uh, yeah, that's him. He's in quite a hurry. Ah, I'll explain my lord's missing rings. Will be stole from him? Not from me, no, from my lord. One gold, one silver, a handful of golden. Ah. My book the Baron was planning to give to the Abbey. Oh, the Historia Tassi. I believe so. Yes, went to pack the Baron's things and they were missing. Boys and no thief. Wouldn't surprise me if he's responsible for the missing rings. That would explain it then. Regrettably, he had ample opportunity for his theft. Yesterday I caught the boy with a hat. Martin, I suppose, peering in through the windows. Could have admonished him at the time, but it eh, seemed harmless. Shame. Baron won't be too put out. My lord is a man of some means. He won't miss the gold or the rings. You think you'll be upset about the book. I was quite excited for that to see it. In any case, I must finish preparing the horses. It was good talking to you, Andreas. I want that book. I'm going to see if I can track him down. We're 0 for 2 on uh, getting favor with people. But, uh... We saw him jump off this way, right? And I get a feeling it's going to be worse than that. Because <laughs> we have not been nice to a number of people. But that's life, I suppose. Anything here? Maybe here? Nothing. Hmm. Like you in real life, favorless. I mean, I've been nice to some people. But, I mean, I don't feel like being nice to turds. Plus, we're playing a rapscallion, so it's fine. Is that it? We're not not allowed to cross either way. It's unfortunate. Uh, 
Mm, I'm lucky. Just gotta check, essentially. And heck, I was nice at some point. I'm just not gonna flatter people unless they deserve it. Would he be at the mill, maybe? Only other place I can think. We would have ran home, I think. I guess we're just not allowed to... No, he wouldn't be here. He would have ran home. A mystery for another time, but... We do know that he's got the hat going for him. isn't here right now. Oh, this is wonderful. The rest of the abbey is soaked and there's not a drop of rain in here. Good thing the abbot had auto replaced the roof in the scriptorium and library last month. The calefactory next door can stay warm while everyone else is cold and wet. Instead of bragging about our good fortune, you should think upon your brothers and our sisters and pray for their health and safety. Well, the abbot's foresight saved a lot of our work and protected what's in the library. Town hasn't fared as well. I'm sure they'll be fine. More importantly, if they're not, I don't care. Heart is harder than the stone of this floor, brother guy. I'm a grumpy old monk, but where's the nice one? Pierre? Oh, no. They're gonna kill him, aren't they? Oh, left to speak with the abbot some time ago. Why is Mateo ringing the bell? You can't be terse already. Right, stop soon. Such cacophony is an assault on my frail ears. It's not stopping. I suppose the swings are being summoned to the chapter house. God, give me the strength to endure the rain. It's 50 feet, old man. You'll be fine. God, give me the strength to endure this man. <laughs> uh, oh boy. I do believe things are about to pop off a little bit. This can't all be because of the storm. I should see what's the matter. Mm, yeah, I'm actually gonna. He said the prior's house? Or the abbey? Abbot. Abbey, abbey, abbot. Nothing there. Okay. Mm. Uh, the cloister? Where's the cloister? I don't remember. What's the cloister? Well, what's the cloister? Cloister? I don't remember. Cloister is the, the nuns. No, it's here. This is the cloister. Maybe the chapter house. I just think something terrible has happened, Master Arm. Oh my. Who the heck died? The Baron! Makes sense, mystery-wise. What's happened? On the plus side, he's been hurt. I don't think I don't think he's been hurt. I think he's very dead. On the plus side, we don't need to regain his favor anymore because he's dead. Let's go. His father. Where is Brother Florian? Have him come quickly. I'm 
sorry, Father. There's nothing to be done. He's dead. <laughs> Calm yourself. Sister Gertrude please take Sister Walker back to the garden. Yes, Mother Cecilia. God protect us. The Baron is, was, a friend of the Prince Bishop of the Freising. Why is he so worried about the Prince Bishop? Sambi is odd more than one way. Its existence offends some in the church. We are far enough from Rome and Maine that... Maine? Maine's? How easily do you think you could dispose of this body? Mother Abbot, what are you saying? Why are you questioning me? Why are you wasting precious time? Do you want to see the soldiers of the Prince Bishop march up on our steps and fling your brothers and sisters out of our home? Father Abbot, Baron Rothwell goes manservant, is already preparing to leave. The Baron's wife should be here in a matter of hours. This is not the time for rash decisions. Yes, yes, you're right. Okay, but then what will we do? We must send the Baron's man to the court of the Prince Bishop, Bishop in Freising at once. Cecilia, the Baron said the Prince Bishop's archdeacon was in Innsbruck for the Imperial Diet. Even better. Swift action will silence any whispers of impropriety on our part. Given the Baron's stature, the Archdeacon will undoubtedly come to investigate immediately. We must cooperate with him fully and pray for a speedy resolution. Yes, yes. Good. Thank you, Mother Sophia. Brother Washlov, please detain Brother Pierre in the cellar until the Prince Bishop's man arrives. Piero, why? I implore you to reconsider. He was caught in flagrant... De delect in flagrante de in, the in blazing offense red hand got it covered in blood with a knife in his he doesn't look covered in blood guys someone just rolled up to my door with a segway and I'm terrified we're staring straight ahead Human contact is... It's fine, because the window makes it so that they can't really see what I'm doing. And if I don't make eye contact, uh, then I, I... We just don't have to worry about it. Do you really believe that Brother Piero is capable of such a foul deed? Yes, capable enough when motivated by anger. I had no anger against the Baron, Father Abbott. I simply came across them like this. No anger? Not even for insulting your work and forcing us to give it to Andreas? I mean, mostly you. You you did it yourself. I'm here to tell you about Jehovah. Nah, this is only one of them. He looks like he had a clipboard. It's either lawn service, it's window service, or it's roof service. There he goes, off on a segue. <laughs> it's one of the three. Not even... I've had enough... I've had enough missionary work uh, today in this game, actually. It's not a subject for debate. When Prince Bishop's man arrives, we must not be empty-handed. My dude. He is an... <laughs> Insulting guy. This is great. Be quiet. This is not your affair. It is my affair if you're going to make me part of Pierre's supposed motive. I'm through debating this with you. My decision stands. Brother Wojlov will detain Brother Piero in the cellar until I say otherwise. Florian, please escort Andreas out of the abbey. Andreas, do not show your face here again until tomorrow. Do you understand me? This is ridiculous, but yes. Andreas, listen to me. I sympathize with you. I don't think Piero did this either, but this isn't the time to push the abbot. Sure, the other brothers and sisters believe Piero is innocent as well, but the abbot is worried about the prince bishop's attention. If you have any recommendations, I would love to hear them. Take a few hours to calm your nerves and your mind. You need to think clearly. Go to the Druckers, eat a good meal, come back at 3 p.m. We won't have much time, but tap on my window with a small stone, and I'll let you in. Let me in for what? To examine the body. Two days, two hours remain. Oh boy. Florian mandated dinner. 
Let's go to the Druckers. That's great, but I'm actually gonna like look in at everything I can. He is definitely gonna be set up. Oh boy. The real twist would be if he actually did do it, but somehow I doubt it. Anybody want to talk to me? Certainly does not seem like a cat might want to, Mouse Fogger. Uh, Cecilia, you got anything to say? No, oh, thanks. Something I can help you with? Yeah, I need to talk to you about the Baron, how you walked away with the sisters when you arrived. And the Baron was just murdered, it seems worth inquiring about the cause. Why do you not trust in the Abbot's judgment? Do you? That is not an answer, Andreas. You must be careful how you ask and answer questions right now. The Abbot does not want anything to interfere with the Archdeacon's investigation. That includes you. Then help me. Help you what? Blame someone else for the murder? You know Pierre didn't really. It had to have been someone else. Just help me find justice. What does justice look like, Andreas? I know that justice does not look like Piero dying for this murder. Someone will die for this murder, Andreas, but it is not Piero, it will be someone else. The killing of a powerful noble cannot go unpunished, especially while he was under the protection of the abbot. Let me find who did it before the archdeacon arrives. I'm simply a nun. Why do you think I can help you? Let's try a little flattery. That only sees the brothers' side. You need to watch over the sisters and know what's happening with the brothers. True. All right. I did have reason to be concerned about Baron Rothvogel's presence. Baron caused irreparable harm to one of the sisters on his last visit. The damage was severe enough that she had to leave us for some time. What kind of harm? Irreparable. This is why I removed the sisters from his presence as soon as I could. Can I speak with her? I. No, Andreas, I don't think that would be appropriate. You need to know what happened. I understand this is less information that you likely wanted, but I do not think I can tell you any more in good conscience. Trust me when I say the victim of this incident could not have killed the Baron. More than that. Are there any records on her or what happened? Yes, we keep records on all the sisters in the library. Now that doesn't do any good. You're not allowed. But I know where to go. Could I ask Illuminata to see them? She won't give them to you. Records aren't available to outsiders to look through. Why would I say that? Why would I say this? I don't want to say either of these things. Oh. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I found it while exploring the crypt. Don't try it. You'll be caught and you'll be lucky if the abbot only banished you from the abbey until judgment. I didn't want to say that. Uh, well, you're probably right. But that did give us a hint. That did give us a hint. That's all I need. I also want to talk to the uh, the widow. And maybe the guest house if it's not locked. Let's see. Letter to the Baron from Prior Ferenc. Baron Rothvogel, that is in German. Lawrence was blackmailing Ferenc to get him to perform some kind of a cult ritual? Spicy. No wonder Ferenc was so unsettled when Lawrence arrived. Baron could have gotten him executed for witchcraft. Wow. That's a spicy way. To end this. 
Fire to bed. Good night. No worries, Fire. I'm back on Thursday with more of this. Good day. Something, something. He's the printing press guy, right? So that's why. It... Back to the Abbey already? It's only new. Drinks are you alright? I'm not sure. Why don't you come inside and sit down for a not an imposition I'd appreciate a moment to rest. Not an imposition at all. My friends are always welcome in my home. That's cool. The little fading in. Oh gosh. The details. Besides, I could use your opinion on something. Hey Andrea, should I fix you a plate? Um. Always glad to eat your cooking, right? So you must invite Andreas often, over more often so I can hear someone compliment my food. Ah, oh, your cooking is lovely. Hello. Hey, Berthold, how are you? Sleepy. Come back to my workshop. I'm going to do a new run of Til Eulenspiegel. I was printing few years ago in Strasbourg, it's awful. Almost bereft of illustrations. What do you think of these new ones? They look wonderful. Excellent work. Thank you. Be sure to let me know. Are these her woodcuts? They are. Drawings were mine, but she did the bullet cuts. Got enough talent to draw the designs, but only she can do the woodcuts and the type. Andreas, what were the bells for at the Abbey? They were sounding for a long time. Oh, I was trying to keep that a secret to not panic them, but I guess we're going to tell them that the nobleman was murdered. God, Abbey just rode by here yesterday. It gets worse when the elderly brothers I work with, Piero, was accused of the crime. It's awful. A murder at Kearsong? How could a monk do such a thing? I'm sorry, Andreas. Baron seemed like an interesting man, and I've known he's been a patron of the Abbey for years. How did he die? Could it have been an accident? I don't think so. Uh, and does the abbot really believe Brother Piero killed him? You always spoken of him in the kindest terms. I'd rather spare you the details. There's a kid here. But it's hard to believe what happened to him was natural. But no, I can't believe Piero did it. I don't imagine him harming anyone. Back on my account. I've had children even help Agnes a few. I'm not squeamish. Yes, blood! It wasn't Brother Piero. Who do you think could have done it? I did see Lucky Steinauer get into a shouting argument with Lawrence yesterday just before I walked by your place. Lucky? Why would he have caused a shout at a nobleman? Oh my god, I've got so much to eat. Oh. Sausage. Farmer's bread. Egg pasta. Oh my gosh. We, uh... We start with the egg pasta. Probably something else going on you wouldn't know about, dear. What do you mean by that? I don't want to trade gossip, but if you really want to know, talk to some of the other women in town. Or Mother Cecilia up at the Abbey. I spoke to Mother Cecilia already. Her resolve to protect the sisters is unrelenting. Yes, I would imagine so. There's no need for that. Well, he's a forthright man. Sure, if you ask him, he'll tell you what the argument was about. Well, that's good advice. There's something else, though. When Lawrence and I were walking through the meadow, the widow Kemperin came out of the woods and... Yes? Well, she cursed him. Not surprised. Until his late husband, Rannig, ran afoul of Lawrence on his last visit to Tassing. I don't remember the details, but Rannig died just last year, and Otilia has him in the same sense. Then we do the sausage, and then we sop everything else up with the bread. She was always an old bitch, even before she was old. Cops, that's enough. She had to deal with the jobs lot in life. Now she lives all alone at the edge of the woods. I rumor she's going to lose her property soon. 
I pity her, even if she is a bit bitter woman. There should be some exception in the law for her to inherit. It seems like it'd be more than just, yes. Well, it's always this way. I think my great-grandmother inherited this land way back when. Well, if men changed it, they can change it back. You're right, as always, my dear. Enough about Attilia. Is there anyone else you think may have done it? I don't know if he has any ill intent, but Prior Ferenc has been acting strangely since the day Lawrence arrived. Perhaps an academic disagreement? I know they're both avid readers, both of classics and new works. On his last visit, the Baron brought bought a book on astronomy from me. I know the Prior has some similar interests. Well, the Prior kills someone over a simple disagreement? It's not that outlandish. When I was in university, I saw men throw punches over small academic concerns. Uh, granted, I was very drunk at the time, but I think that's what the argument was about. What is an opinion for some is a testament of faith for others and worth killing for. That may be so, but I've never seen that sort of anger in Prior Ferenc. Not even when Gernal was made abbot instead of him. Afterward, he just seemed bitter. Uh, never violent. Just doesn't seem to be part of his character. So lucky, the widow, the Abbey Prior. Any else? Something strange when we approached the Abbey together. Oh, they're silly. It was outside with some of the sisters. Scowled and took the nuns inside without saying a word. Something they have a history, at least. Only half the bread? Are you insane? I do not know Mother Silly personally, but I never heard anyone speak badly of her. She has caused dislike the Baron. I must believe she had good reason. Well, Andreas, this sounds like there's a lot to look into. Thank you for your care. It's helped me understand how I can help here. Always welcome here, Andreas. Anytime. Yeah. Especially welcome with this one. See, I'm nice to people. It's just, there's specific people that they're like, hey, you probably should tread lightly around. I'm like, no. Screw them. They're terrible. Be good until I come back, Bertolt. I'll try. Several leads to follow, but where should I start? Could talk to Lucky Stein hours, probably working in front of his house. Kemperin lives south here, near Franz Bauer. Ferenc is at Scriptorium, but I won't be able to talk to him until tomorrow. Still, nothing would prevent me from that silly in the convent, which I did. If I don't attend Brother Florian's examination of the body of the Abbey, he'll have to do it without me. The cipher Ferenc has. Though it's going to be hard to talk to him because uh, I think they both hate me. Uh, Atelier Kemperin caused the Baron, cursed the Baron, yeah, yeah. Stone Mason was angry, not sure why. I'm only thing I'm worried about is like how are we going to deal with uh, time like what causes time to pass and what doesn't kind of deal I'm not sure. Not sure. Well, that's okay. That's for uh, that's for tomorrow. 
not today. Uh, I think this is a perfect time to end it. Well, our investigation kicking off in earnest. And, uh, yeah. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you'd like to leave a follow or just come back hang out any other time you want, we'll be back on Thursday with more Pentiment because this has been pretty... Maybe not exciting for some people, but I find it very engrossing. So I hope you guys do, too. Uh, bye, buddy. And, uh, yeah. Until next time. Toodles.